Hooking up a fifth wheel is actually much easier than a lot of people think. So today I'm gonna to walk you through step by step that way you can be a pro. The first step is to make sure you have a level surface. Because we're working with mechanical parts, we don't want anything to be misaligned right off the bat. Then you're simply gonna line up the truck with the fifth wheel. After that, you wanna make sure that your wheel chocks are placed, that your awning, slides, and any steps are in. Next up, you just wanna make sure that your hitch is nice and secure, as well as that it's in the right location. Now, if you have a fixed hitch like this one, obviously it's not going to move, but if you have a slider hitch, you wanna make sure that you have it in the travel position where it's at about one inch or so in front of your rear axle. The next step, and this is a simple but often forgotten one, and that is to lower your tailgate. Folks, last thing you wanna do is damage your tailgate by simply forgetting this easy step. Next up, you'll wanna make sure you extend the landing gear so that the kingpin will clear the hitch. All right, so now it's time to move the truck. So what we're gonna do is we're going to back up, generally looking over our right shoulder so that we can see and make sure that our hitch is going to align with the kingpin. And when we bring that back, you actually wanna stop a little bit before the hitch gets to the kingpin because in a second, we're going to have to make sure that they line up correctly. Okay, so now that we're lined up, the next step is that we're actually going to lower the landing gear so that the kingpin comes down. What you actually want is you want the bottom of this kingpin plate to be about one inch lower than our hitch plate. So you actually want this to hit here and ride up into place. What'll happen if you come in too high is you'll have an issue called high pinning and you can scratch your kingpin as well as your jaws. And if you come in high and then try to drop down in, you can severely damage them. So again, you want to bring this down about an inch lower than the plate, let it actually ride up the head and into place. Once we get that to where it needs to be, then we're simply going to open up the jaws. Now this might be a little bit different depending on the hitch you have. For the one I have here, the B&W, I simply release the pin. I will then take this handle and we'll open it up just like so. So with the kingpin in place and your jaws opened up, now we simply have to slowly back up the truck and allow the kingpin to ride up the fifth wheel hitch and lock into place. Before you leave your vehicle, make sure you set the emergency brake. All right, our kingpin is now secured in the hitch. The jaws are closed, but we need to make sure our lever doesn't open. And to do that, we reinsert the safety pin. Now, if yours doesn't have automatic closing jaws, then you will need to use whatever mechanism the owner's manual tells you to use to make sure that the jaws aren't going to open back up. Once that is secure, we will then need to connect our emergency breakaway switch. Now, this is attached to the kingpin. You'll wanna secure this on a solid point on your tow vehicle, on the truck itself. A lot of people make the mistake of attaching it to the hitch, but if the hitch were to come off as well, then your emergency brake may not activate. So I recommend getting a carabiner and finding a secure anchor point on your truck to be able to attach this the correct way. Okay, so the next step is going to be to plug in our seven way. Now, again, important forgotten step, close the tailgate. Then we'll simply take our seven way, plug it in and test all of your lights. Hopefully you can find a spotter, that way you can make sure your running lights as well as your brake lights and your turn signals are all operational. The last thing we have to do before we get to take off on the open road is what's called a pull test. The idea is just one final check to make sure everything is secure the way it's supposed to be. To perform the pull test, what we're going to do is slightly retract the landing gear just enough that we let off some of that downward pressure. Because if the trailer does move, you don't want to bend the landing gear, but if something is wrong and the trailer comes disconnected, you also wanna make sure that the trailer is gonna fall on the landing gear, not fall down and damage the truck. So we're gonna lift that up just a little bit. Then we're going to go inside the truck. You're going to activate the trailer brakes manually, release the parking brake or the emergency brake on your truck, and then slightly hit the gas, just moving the trailer a little bit. Again, you should make sure everything is connected. Once we're sure that we're safe, you can set the emergency brake and come right on back out. After a successful pull test, you'll want to completely raise your landing gear, pull out your wheel chocks, and you are set for the road. As always, folks, thanks for subscribing. Hopefully you got what you came for, and come back next week for another great how-to video.